something terrifying is unfolding in the Pacific Ring of Fire. As we enter the second week of January 2026, the Earth's most perfect cone has become its most deadly. We are witnessing a maximum alert event in the Philippines as the Mayon Volcano, a giant that has been stirring for weeks, officially begins a major magmatic eruption. The numbers coming in this morning are staggering. Over 4,000 residents have been forced to flee their homes in the shadow of the mountain, while a relentless barrage of over 200 pyroclastic flows has been recorded thundering down the volcano's slopes in the last 24 hours alone. This is the great snap manifesting in the Bicol region, and scientists are warning that the worst may be yet to come. Before we dive into the details, let me be clear, this is not a drill. This is not speculation. This is happening right now, and the people of Albay province are living through one of the most dangerous volcanic events in recent Philippine history. On January 6, 2026, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, known as phi vo ACASX, officially raised Mayon's alert to level 3. For those unfamiliar with the alert system, this isn't just a This is a declaration that a magmatic eruption of a summit lava dome is currently underway. It means the volcano has crossed from unrest into active eruption. Let me explain what's happening beneath the surface. The internal plumbing of Mayon is under extreme pressure. Deep underground, a massive reservoir of molten rock has begun its ascent. We are seeing sustained lava extrusion, meaning magma is continuously being pushed out of the crater like toothpaste from a tube. There's a visible crater glow that illuminates the night sky, a haunting orange beacon that tells us magma is incredibly shallow, possibly just hundreds of meters below the summit. But here's what you need to understand. The real danger isn't the lava you see glowing at the top. The real danger is what happens when that lava dome becomes too heavy, too unstable, too structurally compromised. When that dome collapses, and it will collapse, it triggers the most feared volcanic hazard on Earth, the pyroclastic density current. In the Bicol region, locals have a specific name for these deadly clouds of fire, Osan. The word itself carries the weight of generations who have witnessed these phenomena. And make no mistake, these are not just clouds of ash. These are fast-moving, superheated avalanches of volcanic gas, ash, and rock fragments that can reach speeds of 100 to 200 kilometers per hour, with temperatures exceeding 700 degrees Celsius. They flow like rivers, but rivers that incinerate everything in their path. Trees are carbonized instantly. Buildings are flattened and buried. And tragically, any living thing caught in their path has virtually no chance of survival. The frequency of these flows has hit a critical threshold that has scientists deeply concerned. We have recorded over 200 Pyroclastic density current events descending the Bonga Gully on the southeast flank in just the past 24 hours. Let me repeat that. Over 200 individual PDC events in a single day. This massive count indicates a constant, high-volume supply of magma that is relentlessly feeding the eruptive process. 5 all cs Director Teresito Bacol Cole has been warning the public that these PDCs are the primary killers in Mayan's history. He specifically referenced the 1993 eruption, when 77 people were lost to these rivers of fire. Many of those victims were farmers who had returned to their fields during a lull in activity, believing the danger had passed. They were caught off guard when the dome collapsed without warning, sending a pyroclastic surge racing down the mountain at highway speeds. The 1993 tragedy is seared into the collective memory of the Bicol region. It's why authorities are taking such aggressive evacuation measures this time. They've learned the hard way that Mayan gives no second. Chances. The human cost of this eruption is mounting by the hour. As of January 11, 2026, authorities have executed a mandatory evacuation of more than 4,000 people, nearly 1,000 families, from the six-kilometer permanent danger zone that encircles the volcano. This isn't a voluntary evacuation. This is a forced removal from ancestral lands, from family farms, from homes that some of these families have occupied for generations. Troops, police, and disaster personnel are working around the clock, 
24 hours a day, 7 days a week, to clear villages like Tobacco City, Santo Domingo, and Malilipot. The scenes from these evacuations are heartbreaking, families loading whatever possessions they can carry onto trucks and motorcycles, elderly residents being carried out on stretchers, livestock being left behind because there's simply no room in the evacuation convoys. These are people who have lived with Mayan their entire lives, who have farmed its fertile slopes, who have gazed at its perfect symmetry every single day, and now that beauty has turned to terror. Many of these evacuees are being housed in government-run shelters, school gymnasiums, municipal halls, churches, anywhere that can provide a roof and some basic supplies. But here's the sobering reality. Five Volks officials are warning that this unrest could last for up to six months. Six months of displacement. Six months of uncertainty. Six months of living in crowded, temporary facilities with limited resources. The regional infrastructure is being pushed to its absolute limit. This is a long-term siege, not a short-term emergency. The fabled cone, once a symbol of natural beauty and a major tourist attraction that drew visitors from around the world, is no longer something to admire. It is now a high-intensity combat zone between humanity and the Earth's internal furnace. Now here's the question that's on everyone's mind. Is Mayan's sudden awakening a coincidence? Are we simply witnessing the random, unpredictable nature of volcanic activity? Or is there something bigger at play? Geologists are increasingly looking at the global map, and what they're seeing is deeply concerning. This eruption follows the catastrophic magnitude 9.0 rupture in Japan earlier this month, an earthquake so powerful it literally moved the main island of Honshu several meters to the east. That seismic event sent a tectonic shockwave rippling through the entire Philippine sea plate. Think of the Earth's crust as a network of interconnected puzzle pieces, all grinding against each other with unimaginable force. When one piece suddenly shifts, as Japan's did, it doesn't happen in isolation. The stress redistributes. The pressure finds new pathways. And volcanic systems that were already near their tipping point can be nudged into eruption. We are seeing what appears to be a global synchronization of high-threat systems. While Mayon explodes in the Philippines, the ocean floor is rising at Oregon's Axial Seamount, one of the most active submarine volcanoes in the Northeast Pacific. The Naples squeeze is tightening beneath Vesuvius and Campi Fligre in Italy, where hundreds of thousands of people live directly in the danger zones. The Great Snap, this global pattern of intensifying geological unrest, is vibrating through the ring of fire like a plucked guitar string, unzipping the Earth's crust from the Caribbean trenches to the mountains of Sicily. The energy released in that massive Japanese earthquake hasn't disappeared. It's been absorbed into the system, and now it's being released in different forms, in different locations. Some scientists are cautious about drawing direct causative links between these events. They remind us that correlation doesn't equal causation, but the timing, the intensity, the geographic clustering, it's becoming harder to dismiss as mere coincidence. So where do we go from here? As of today, January 11th, Mayon remains at alert level. Three, but scientists are describing the situation as dynamically unstable. That's a technical way of saying this could escalate rapidly and without much warning. Five Volks is monitoring for the critical signs that would trigger alert level four a designation that would indicate a hazardous eruption is imminent or in progress. Those signs include a dramatic spike in volcanic earthquakes, sustained lava fountaining visible from the crater, or pyroclastic density currents that reach farther into inhabited zones beyond the current exclusion area. The current monitoring data shows an increasing rate of seismic energy release. Every day, hundreds of small earthquakes are being recorded beneath the volcano tremors that indicate magma movement, rock fracturing, and dome instability. The volcano is exhaling 777 tons of sulfur dioxide every single day, a staggering amount of gas that signals the magma is actively degasifying as it ascends toward the surface. When magma rises, dissolved gases come out of solution, like opening a bottle of champagne. 
The more gas being released, the more magma is on the move. And 777 tons per day is an enormous flux that tells us this isn't slowing down anytime soon. The question scientists are asking isn't if Mayon will erupt further. The question is when the next major dome collapse will occur and how far the resulting pyroclastic flows will travel. Will they stay confined to the established gullies and channels? Or will they spill over into new areas, threatening communities that might have thought they were safe? This is a developing emergency, and we are committed to keeping you informed every step of the way. The people of the Bikal region are facing an extraordinary test of resilience and courage. They're watching one of the world's most beautiful volcanoes become one of its most dangerous. They're living with the constant roar of explosions, the glow of lava lighting up their night sky, and the knowledge that at any moment, the mountain could unleash something even more catastrophic. Stay informed. Stay alert.